Welcome to the warm-up. We are in Defiance to talk with the Defiance Bulldogs. I'm Mark Koontz. Matt Finkel will join us momentarily, but we'll begin with the Defiance head coach, Jerry Beauty, longtime head coach for the Defiance Bulldogs, and I'm sure 2014 is a season you want to forget about. I don't want to say Defiance hit rock bottom, rock bottom but when you go 0-10, there's there's a lot of room for improvement. We'll put it that way. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, exactly. It doesn't get worse than that in coaching, you know. And, and they always tell you if you stay in it long enough, <clears throat> you experience everything. Well, that was about as bad as it gets. Uh, I think my first year when I was head coach at Van Wert, we were one eight and one. I thought that was bad, but zero and ten here is not good. And uh, only way to go is up. Uh, we have a new uh, energy here. We have some uh, really good seniors this year that have, are really going to make a difference compared to what we had last year. And, and it wasn't so much uh, the, the uh, senior athleticism last year as it was the lack of attitude and leadership that we had. And uh, don't get me wrong, good kids, you'd, you'd like all of them, but uh, you don't want your paycheck in their back pocket. <laughs> Couple of close losses. There are some positives to build off of last year, I would say. Yeah, you know, it's tough. You, you, I know you started off by saying you, you want to forget everything. Uh, you you want to you want to get change what you did last year. I think you need to remember why you were that way and, and fix it. And, uh, of course, that let us know will, will help a lot on that on those endeavors. But, uh, you know, last year we, we didn't make any excuses during the season that, you know, this is why we're, we're losing. But we had eight, uh, four kids that went down that were all starters both ways so it was eight starters gone by the third game of the year uh, we played a tremendous game in the first game against Napoleon led by two touchdowns or uh, actually 11 points with a minute 15 left in the game and and blew it um, because of it not only our play but because of some plays that went against us officiating wise that our kids just didn't handle well after that it, it was tough after that but our kids came every day practiced every day worked every day so I can't uh, rate them on that but we need to do things better here you talked about having a new attitude what are the ways that you try to instill that new attitude with this team going into this season well we've done a lot of things with positive thinking and you know you got to get out of this this you know we're used to winning here and and we got to get back on track winning the losers find ways to lose winners find ways to win and we've got to we've got to you know the best thing that could happen to us is win a game you know we need to win a game and uh, it's tough talking like that at defines but you got to suck up and say you know, this is what you got to do. We're following two teams that won state titles here last year. We have a basketball and a baseball team that won state titles, played on the biggest stage in the state you can play on, and won both of those. Some of that's got to filter down to football uh, and, and, and give us an attitude of, hey, we show up, we're ready to play, and uh, we're going to play well. How's the summer go for the team? Great summer, great summer. Our kids always work hard in the summer, uh, the weightlifting program, the running, and we take them to camp at the University of Finley for three days at the end of July. It was a great camp. So we came into two days with a lot of stuff done and ready to go with, with just review. Uh, we've got some some new talented people out that weren't out last year, whether it was because they didn't come out, whether grades kept them from being out. Uh, or whether they they might not even lived here then, but we have a few move-ins too. So we're looking forward to it. But just because you're better doesn't mean you're better than the teams you're going to play. You know, we're we're better than we were last year. I can tell you that. But I don't know that we're better than anybody we're going to play yet. First opponent, Napoleon, that traditional opener here at Fred Brown Stadium this year. So that means it's the Thursday night game. Right. I know that's always an important thing for you to have that game on Thursday. Get get that center stage for a big rivalry game. Right. Well, you know, that, that game's in its like 97th year. It's a special <laughs> game. And uh, we think it's, in defiance anyway, we think having it on Thursday night really puts it in the forefront in Northwest Ohio, if not the state. Uh, so uh, we think that that should juice the kids up a little bit too. I'm sure the Napoleon kids are fired up about it bad part about it is you got to go to school the next day. That's the only bad thing about it. But we, our crowds will be huge. Uh, the incentives will be huge. And it'll be a great game as always. You'll be able to see that game right here on a WOSN, one of a couple of Defiance games scheduled for a rebroadcast, including the St. Mary's game. Let's talk about that Western Buckeye League. Uh, I think there's a sense around the league that it could be almost anybody's league this year. I think that's true. Um, you know, the way I count, and I may be wrong, uh, but I count eight quarterbacks back in this league, and you know, everything's quarterback generated these days. So uh, that's that tells me that this league's going to be good again this year, really good and, and well balanced. Uh, I think you have some of the good teams, like Wapak was really good last year. They lost a ton of people, but they're going to 
come back with a bunch of good kids. Uh, so I put them right up there, and I think their coaching staff is outstanding. Uh, Doug's back at St. Mary's. He's going to have them playing well again. They're going to be right in the race. Kenton, even though Mike's gone, uh, uh, this would be the second year he'd be gone. They didn't miss a beat, and I don't expect them to miss a beat again. Uh, I think uh, OG's going to be good. And uh, a, a sleeper team that I, I tell everybody to look out for them is Van Wert. They have 17 or 18 starters back. I don't know what their depth's like, but they have good coaching staff. They've worked hard. They're big. They're fast. And uh, they've got talent. So I think they're a top three team. So, and I may have missed some uh, other teams. Elite is always going to be in there. Their quarterback's outstanding. Their coaches do a great job. And uh, so I don't know where we fit in all that, but we have to reprove ourselves as one of the teams in this league that can play the big game. One thing that is changing with the Western Buckeye League, 7 p.m. starts this year as opposed to 7.30. From a coach's perspective, does that change any of the approach? I mean, do you just have to shift everything up half an hour to the normal Friday night? Pretty much. It's as simple as that. Uh, if you're me, I hate pregame warm-ups. As far as I'm concerned, we could get off the bus and play, but you know legalities would step in there. Uh, so uh, I think the earlier we play, the better. It doesn't bother us that we get done later because it's wide open offense now and stuff. I, I really don't care about that. I like like getting there early, playing early, and, and getting her done. From the athletic director's perspective, any concern that half an hour earlier is going to cause any problems at the gate? Well, well, we'll find out. You know, if it's anybody, it's going to be us because we're the farthest out. We're like the outer limits here compared to the Western Buckeye League. But uh, our people are good fans, and if the game starts at 7, they'll be there. Now, another big change statewide this year is the new mandates as opposed to the, the hitting. Obviously, it's all about safety, trying to keep kids as safe as possible. How does that affect what you do practice-wise now? Well, you know, this is my 39th year coaching, and I think it's the biggest rule change ever since I've been in coaching because it affects uh, the very thing that makes football football, which is hitting. I'm not against the rule. I don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, if you talk to pro coaches or you listen to pro coaches talk about the injuries that occurred, they're only allowed like six or seven hitting practices once the season starts. And they relate a lot of their injuries in the season to people not being ready for the physicality of the game. I wonder how that will affect us. I, mean, I think you're going to have to be very good monitors of, of the hitting and uh, how you're going to do it to get the most out of it, not just hitting each other. Like you used to, we would scrimmage for hours, you know, here. Uh, we can't do that anymore. So uh, it's going to be 30 minutes of intensity and controlled hitting. And uh, uh, the one thing, I, another concern about it is how coaches will manipulate that rule. Uh, what's What's the rule to me compared to what's the rule to somebody else? And then they get the edge on you hitting wise. Um, it's still the most important part of the game. It's what makes the game football. And uh, and I, I just think uh, it's going to have an impact one way or the other. But you're going to have less injuries because you're going to hit less. I mean, let's face it. But I, I'd like to see how it relates when game time comes around. And it's certainly going to be interesting to see how the OHSA enforces that. We know it's not necessarily an investigative body, but there are complaints brought to them all the time, how they deal with that is going to be an interesting aspect to this new mandate as to the practicing in football in the state of Ohio for high school. We're going to take a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, more from the Defiance Bulldogs here on WOSA. Welcome back to the warm-up. I am joined now by three Defiance seniors. It is Cole Allman, center defensive tackle, right to my right. Jake Meyer, wide receiver defensive back in the middle, and the quarterback, Alex Gonzalez, on the end. Cole, let's start with you. How'd the summer go for you headed into your senior season with the Bulldogs? Um, we worked really hard this summer uh, in our summer STPs, and uh, now in two days we're grinding it, grinding it out, and uh, we're looking to do way better than we did last year. <laughs> Yeah, Jake, so the 0-10 last year, Coach talked about, you know, kind of a forgettable season, but what yeah. did you learn from, from that type of year? Uh, last year, I mean, obviously it was it's difficult to come back from that, but, I mean, there's nowhere to go but up. Uh, we just need to be a lot more aggressive defense-wise. I mean, we really need to work on tackling and everything, so. Well, Coach, you guys will be happy to hear Coach was talking up this senior class. He has yeah. high expectations. Alex, you're the quarterback. You were the quarterback last year. What type of experience did you gain from last season and headed into this year? Well, last season, coming in as a like, first year, was a little shaky at first, but grew up throughout the season, so expecting a lot more. 
week one last year was a, a really close game for you guys. You, coach said you blew a lead, but yeah. this year, get the game here Thursday night. What type of atmosphere are you expecting against Napoleon? Uh, we're expecting a very electric atmosphere, and uh, we definitely won't let them get away with a win here at, uh, yeah. here at our house. Yeah, Jake, what would it mean to you just to get back in the win column? I think that would be pretty important for this oh, team. Yeah, uh, especially playing along with all my best friends, seniors, everything. I think it would be amazing to take that rock back. That would be the best feeling in the world. Alex, what, what's special about this senior class? Seems like you guys get along pretty well. Um, we're motivated a lot, and we always hang out outside of football, so we have a bond outside of football and inside of football. That's great to hear. Best of luck to you guys this season. Thank you. Time for a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, more Bulldogs will join me here in the hot seat. Welcome back to the warm-up in Defiance, getting you ready for the Bulldogs 2015 season. Joined now by three more seniors. Joined by Noah Strasbach, linebacker and quarterback, right to my right. In the middle is Jack Frederick. He's on the line. And Jordan Scott on the end, wide receiver, linebacker. Noah, let's start with you. How did your summer go, and how's the beginning of camp treating you? Well, I thought that as a, as a, in a, as a team and a, as a whole, we just um, we put in a lot of work this summer, worked pretty hard. Uh, as with our summer workouts and our seven on sevens, I thought we were pretty successful in that. And then uh, starting camp on Saturday, it was a really good first day. A lot of guys ready to go, um, working hard, learning their positions, um, learning their jobs. And then we're just getting getting the grind started today. Jack, is there a different atmosphere with this group in, in this year than than maybe even last year? Yeah, I think I think just the mold as our as our senior class coming together. I think I think we're more of a family better than last year. I don't know. I mean, just better, better altogether teamwork, just better football team, I think, personally. Jordan, what, what was the camp up at Finley like? You guys went up there for a couple days at the end of last month and uh, some team bonding experience? Oh, yeah, a lot of team bonding. Uh, it was really, really challenging because it was so hot, mm -hmm. like every day. Right. And we had those three practices that one day that killed. But it was a, it was a great team experience. Must have gotten you ready for camp, though. Right. Noah, playing in the Western Buckeye League, everyone expects it to be competitive again. Is there a game you're focused on, or are you going to take it one week at a time in the league? Um, well, first of all, we got to work on Napoleon, first of all. And then, and then once we get to league play, it's just one week at a time, just trying to pick up those league games. And hopefully by the end of the year, you're at the top of the league competing for a league title. Jack, what do you like about playing in, in the WBL? Uh, it's, it's real competitive. Uh, Real, really good conference all around. I mean, it's it's fun to play in. Jordan, what would you say uh, the goals for for this year are? Um, to win more than one game this year, and to actually compete out there. Because I feel like we didn't compete as well last year as we could have. Well, best of luck to you guys. Thanks for letting us come out. And again, a reminder: you can see that opener against Napoleon right on the West Ohio Sports Network. That's going to do it for this edition of the warm-up. For Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time.